Hi, this is Scott with Midwest Cam. I'm here with another spree video. This time around we'll be showing how easy it is to program and set up parts for a four axis rotary table. I'll also be using an ex exclusive Midwest Cam macro for setting up parts on a four axis rotary table. So let's get started. Let's uh, open up a new a spree template and this template's a Haas VF2 with an HRT210 table on it. If you want to learn more about uh, templates, you can search YouTube for Spree template videos, and there are plenty of those. In this template, it is already set up with the rotary table, uh, the fixture plate, the indexing table. There are already tools loaded, perhaps uh, some common tools for general machining. You can always add uh, tools if you needed those to an Esprit template or pull them from the knowledge base. In this case, these tools will suffice for this part. Uh, we also have the machine model for the simulation for collision detection and kinematics of the tool motion and the tool path. So we'll just go through this quick and uh, let's start by pulling in, make sure we've got our part layer active. So we'll import a solid model, and this will import in the modeling space that the part was modeled in. So we'll need to set this in its place in our fixtures. Grab these two sides first. And we're going to orient this part uh, along the y-axis just to center uh, this side along this point. And then we'll select our entire model and we will move that from this reference point location to a point on the fixture at the, our midpoint location here and then we will translate it up again let's move in this case just for reference uh, a little bit up and to the right so this would be our position in the fixture now I don't have a uh, fixture plate or anything on our rotary table. I'll we'll have to use your imagination for that. But you could picture maybe something like this uh, on your mounting plate and you're positioning your part model in the first uh, fixturing location like we've done here. Okay, now at this point, well, let's turn off our uh, fixture layer to simplify our view here. Um, let's go ahead and create our stock on our first first part and we'll just create some stock based on a bounding block on this part right here we'll add that to our list of stock items so we can see when we fire up our simulation we have some stock sitting here ready to be machined Okay, let's start uh, programming this. First thing I want to do is I'm going to create uh, like a pocketing type of operation to clear all this material out. So we'll select uh, the area of the part that we want to pocket out, and we'll just simply select uh, pocket machining. The spree will automatically create a feature in this area, and let's go ahead and let's open up a saved process. Um, if you want to learn more about the technology settings and the Spree toolpaths. There is a uh, a lot of functionality in the toolpaths, as well as the uh, saving and opening processes, as I just did. Again, there are plenty of videos um, from Midwest Cam and others on YouTube uh, for learning more about that. So we've opened up a process. Let's uh, check our tool. That tool should suffice. Let's um, automatically find the depth of the pocket from the feature recognition. And uh, we'll click OK. And we'll have our tool path here. You can see in our operations list for that first part, this machine in this area. OK, let's uh, grab this bottom face of this pocket. Okay. Let's uh, actually create the t same type of operation. Let's go ahead and let's call this uh, pocket top slot so we can differentiate a little bit. And we'll just change our tools. By changing the tools, um, see we automatically recognize the depth of that pocket. Uh, Spree automatically updates the feeds and speeds based on the tool. 
we just simply select OK. Let me go back in just to show you how easy it is to, to make a change. I'm going to rename this operation. We're going to call this uh, mill top area for lack of uh, something better to call it. Okay, so now at this point we can see we've got some machining uh, done on here. If we want, we can go ahead and kind of get an idea of uh, what we've got. There's our machining simulation. Let's turn off uh, tracing the tool path. You can see we've got uh, the tool horror and, and tool collision detection on. Uh, let's say we want to turn on a few more things to uh, watch while we're uh, simulating this, spindle direction, you know, whatever you'd like to see, we can see in our output window here. So there's our tool path for the first couple of operations. So we're off to a good start. <laughs> Let's go ahead and rotate the uh, the part around here a little bit to the back side for the other machining operations. And let's select this open slot here. And we'll pocket that as well. Notice the Spree Automatic creates open pocket feature. And let's select a uh, process for that. Let's pick my slotting process. This tool should be good. Total depth automatically recognized from the feature and we have a open pocket. Let's select uh, this loop right here and basically just duplicate this. Call this a uh, side slot. <clears throat> and again, let's rename this one. Um, since I forgot to do it, let's call it side slot open. All right, one more thing to do on this part is we're going to create, go ahead and create a, a hole feature uh, for our hole here. Now, even though if we look at our feature, we get um, the size, the depth, and diameter, and everything from that hole. Let's um, just open up a process because we're just going to create a quarter 20 tapped hole at this location. So we'll open up that process so it's got the spot drilling, the drilling, and the tap. And then we are done programming our part. Our first part at our first location. Okay. Now let's make one quick little change. Let's go in here and find uh, this corner vertex just so I can illustrate for you uh, the work coordinate settings here. Let's go in and we'll put a point here just for reference. Okay. And we're going to go to our work coordinate. You can see here's our work coordinate being displayed down here. Our template is just comes in as XYZ. So we can call this uh, G54. We're going to output that as G54 and that's actually going to be located right here. Let's put a little bit of rotary clearance in there. So now when we output our code everything is going to be referenced from uh, our G54 position right here. So if we want again we could run our simulation. Um, see our simulation on our part. Let's turn off uh, the head on here. We can watch our part being machined. Speed it up a little bit. Uh, you can see in an order of operations, we're doing this top slot. Then we'll get our indexing over. We see the angle being indicated over here to our open slot, our sides, side slot, and then the uh, tap hole operations. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, if you want to see more on simulation, uh, see YouTube for more videos. Okay, now at this point, we have one part programmed, and we want to duplicate this part around this rotary table. So, what we're going to utilize here is the, and let's drop it over here a little bit, the Midwest Cam Macro for four axis rotary setup. Uh, pretty straightforward to use here. Indicate how many parts you want per side. Let's make four parts per side. We'll put them three and a half inches apart. Four sides, nine degrees apart. And let's check use secondary work coordinate. Since we're going to have a total of 16 parts, uh, we're, we're not going to be able to use G54 through 59 for work coordinates since we're using a work coordinate each individual part. This will actually uh, allow the output of uh, G154 P1 type of output. So we'll click OK. 
and it'll tell me that I forgot to select my stock so we'll just simply uh, go back select my stock and it tells me hey I saved my stock as a simulation stock uh, select my base uh, work coordinate and then the macro finishes up by creating all of my different work coordinate locations around my rotary table now we'll take our operations from our first part and we'll copy those to all the other work coordinates we give a spree a minute here to finish uh, calculating the, that copy command and to update the stock across all the individual parts Okay, and we can see all of our machine operations in our graphics area here okay now one more thing I want a couple of things before we continue is I want to select uh, my first operations because the post I'm using uh, will allow for the output of block elite uh, for all the positions other than the first position to allow for quicker operator setup at the machine and we do that if I invert my selection of operations and go in and modify a custom setting uh, for the operations, just put a value in there. The post will actually block delete all the rest of those operations. Okay, now at this point, if we look at the order of our operations, you can see very clearly that the first part is being done complete before the operations move on to the next one. But we want to optimize this for um, rotation tool usage uh, and rotary angles um, so let's select all of our operations here again and we're going to do a, a spree advanced sorting so we're going to come here and we're going to go to our sorting and first we're going to sort uh, by tool number and then we're going to use custom here because if we go back here and if we look um, at our tools here they're not numbered necessarily one two three four so if we go in here and look at our advanced sorting again um, and look at the custom order we can see they are listed in the order that they are used in the first operation but we could drag and drop and and change these if we wanted um, if you look carefully you notice they do increment up from smallest to largest so in this case we could do by ascending then we're going to sort by angle and I'm going to use custom here because I want to make sure that we go 0, 90, 180, and then minus 90 or 270. Okay, and then within those angles, we're going to um, sort by work coordinate name. One of the advantages of the uh, macro that created the work coordinates is it names them sequentially as they're created across the part. So this makes it very easy to sort by ascending work coordinate name. So let's click apply. And again, we give a spree moment. You can see in the background here, it is actually uh, moving operations around. And we'll see that reflect here in the operations list in just a moment. So, now let's go ahead and exit out of this. And let's kind of review again. Okay, we opened up our template. Uh, we imported our part, our first part and move that into position. Uh, we programmed it. We ran the uh, for axis rotary setup macro. Uh, the macro created the all the work coordinates which you can see in a spree. Each work coordinate has copies of all the features and the parts as well as it created uh, all the stock copies from the first position to all the work coordinate positions here. Let's click OK there. Okay, now we could run through our simulation and we could watch each part one at a time. You can see we've got the first tool. Speed this up a little bit. Uh, running the parts in order by size, by tool, by rotation angle. Notice the true kinematic motion of the machine. It's actually moving the table in X, Y, and the head in Z. And now the rotation here.
All right, so you get an idea of what we've got. Now we could go in and use some simulation tools here in Esprit. Let's like pick our last uh, operation with this tool. We can see all of the toolpath created, the stock that's left over after those. Or we could simply come in and see our finished parts sitting on our rotary table. At this point, the only thing that's really left to do is to create our G code. So we'll create our G code. So here is our code. You see a list of tools being used. Our start of the program, our first tool call, uh, setting zero, clamping and unclamping um, the A axis calling up G54P1, indexing a part to um, first position, and then calling the uh, subroutine at each location, and all but the first one are block deleted for easy setup. Let's quickly go look at uh, our subroutines down here at the bottom. So we can see here's our first mill area top. Okay, we'll go to the next subroutine. That's number two, that's the pocket top slot. And the third one, slot open. Let's go back to our code here. And our next one is side slot. So, quick and easy, utilizing uh, the tools available to anyone in the Esprit Cam software. Thank you.